Poirier, Dick Powell, David Niven, Ida Lupino. In the room. Excellent house, you will see. Let me show you the interior, sir. Fine house and a good neighborhood. Why, I myself live right down the street. Well, why didn't you say so? You like it? Mm -hmm. si, si. Let's take a look at it. Is not the house supremely beautiful, sir? Yeah, supremely. The only house you can show me? Hey, not only the only, but also the finest house. The most supreme house. Si. What are you, the official guest man? A brilliant boy. He lives down the street with his uncle Federico. We are neighbors. His mom and papa. Hey, Jaime, tell the gentleman, who was the welterweight champion of the world for the longest period of time? Sugar Ray Robinson, 147 pounds. Four years, two months, and 20 days. Well, if somebody, the gentleman does not know about my Serena, my own daughter, a tiger for cleanliness. Such a good worker is hard to believe. The boy knows Serena. Am I telling the truth? Si, si. Well, all right, I'll, I'll take it. This is the van's okay? Supremely okay. Very seldom do the tourists honor our village. Mostly they stay in Havana or by the sea. Well, I'm not exactly a tourist. I'm a doctor. Doctor. That's right. Now you tell all your friends I'll treat their aches and pains supremely reasonable. Let's get my luggage. No, the house is not for rent. You just took my money. Take your money. The house is not for rent. Why is the house suddenly not for rent? You did not tell me you were a doctor. So? I do not own the house. I am only the agent. I follow instructions. You took my money. You told me the house was for rent. I need a house. I'm sorry, a deal is a deal. Take your money and do not come back. I don't know what you're talking about. Tell him. Tell him he will not listen to me. What is this? I rage, I plead, I insist, I implore, and still he will not listen. My friend Rodriguez is the high blood pressure type, and doctor. You can say that again. I think I could help him. I tell him he cannot live here. I explain it very, very politely, and he stays. He stays! Is politely like now? Uh, doctor, I have a grocery store down the next street. It's none of my business, but when Rodriguez gets excited, he lives across the street from me. So he came to me, and he asked me to explain to you. There is a policy in this town. No outside doctors. No outside doctors of any kind? That's the policy. Whose policy? Uh, doctor, we are a very ancient town. We have beliefs and customs that may, uh, may not make sense to somebody from the outside world. Doesn't make any sense to me at all. You know what attracted me to your ancient town? You're a stone's throw from Havana, one of the most civilized cities in the whole world. And yet half your children die before they reach the age of ten. The highest death rate from malaria and yellow fever. And yet not one doctor in a town of nearly 3,000. Well, what you say may be true, but what can we do? These are our ways and have been for many centuries. Well, somebody ought to look after you. Somebody does. Antonio Carral looks after us. He always has. Oh. Maybe I should speak to him about opening a practice here. He might understand. No, no, it is not done. We leave everything to him, to his judgment. To his judgment? Well, if you don't mind my saying so, up till now, the statistics prove that your Antonio Correll hasn't been doing a very good job of it. Take your money and go. I will be blamed. My blood will be on your hands. Your blood? My friend Rodriguez is very excitable. We have explained to the doctor. Surely he has respect for our customs. Well, I certainly do. But I'm also quite stubborn, and I intend to stay here. Well, 
What is there to argue about? I must get back to the store. I left some people waiting. Come on. No one will come here. They will avoid you like you were a deadly snake. Rodriguez is right about that, Doctor. My name is Sarina. This is for you. Ninety-three dollars, my dead mama's bracelets, my own earrings purchased in Havana, if you will only go. Uh, for a second, I thought I was about to receive my first patient. Your father's Juan Rodriguez, isn't he? Yes. You will go? Mm, I thought so. It's a very dramatic family. They are very lovely. Mm. They cost 200 pesos. Ninety-three dollars, too. American money. He will go. Father will not leave the house. He has been told he will be punished. He does not sleep anymore. Why are you doing this to us? Serena, what's wrong with this town? It looks like any other village around here. Dirt streets, stucco houses, dogs, kids, mosquitoes. But you have no church, you have no school. People seem to live in terror. I walk the streets and people turn away from me like I had the plague. I, I try to talk to them, their faces turn to stone. What is it? What are they afraid of? Is it this Antonio Carell? Wait. I can give your father a message. Tell him I'm tired fighting. Have the house back. You mean this? When? Today, tomorrow, as soon as I can pack. Oh, he will be so happy. Thank you. Come in. Dr. Graham. Ah, did you come back for your treasures? No one will help me. What's wrong? My father. Yes? Something has happened to him. Our house is marked for death. I cannot get inside. And they are all afraid to help me. Come on. The market means the house of death. You mean that? Probably some children put it there. And you can't get in. Father. <laughs> I want a complete report on my desk, neatly typed by four o'clock. And drive carefully, no hurry. Four o'clock, my learned autopsy surgeon will startle me with the information the poor man died of a broken neck. Another triumph for science. I can talk to her now? Well, yeah, she's quiet. And be gentle. May we speak now of your father's death? My father killed himself. He was sick. My father killed himself. When you first saw him, you called a name. Antonio Carell. My father killed himself. He was sick. Serena. My father killed himself. He was sick. My father killed himself. He was sick. Is that what she said? Antonio Carell? That's what I love about this island. Havana, city of culture. Wide boulevards, neon lights. But take a dusty road this far inland and you're back in the jungle. Dancing to voodoo drums. Voodoo drums? You don't know about Corel? 
The deathless one? Only that he evidently has this town in the grip of terror. And Madame Evercarrel. You've never heard of her? She was a voodoo queen on this island. Around 1720. She's buried quite near here. Her husband was the supreme voodoo man. They say he came from Haiti. They say his eyes glow in the dark like a yellow flame. They say his voice... They say all sorts of things about Antonio Corral. And this Corral, supposed to be his descendant? My good doctor, this is the same man. This is what they believe. What kind of idiotic nonsense? What is it, a racket, a cult? According to what we hear, each succeeding generation of Corrells act as sort of guardians for Antonio, collecting tribute from the people year after year. Why do the people give it? They've been taught from childhood they have to pay it to live. Well, Juan didn't live. He didn't live because he told you of Antonio Corral's existence. And who are the present Corrals? Who knows? It's like trying to catch hold of a handful of smoke. Shall I show you what it's like to try to trace a myth, my dear doctor? Bring them in. And that's all you know. Your name? Federico Gomez. What do you do in the town? I have a grocery store. You knew the dead man? Yes. You see, doctor, so far everything is fine. We're entertaining the thought he might have been killed by those who work for Antonio Corral. You see the eyes go blank, doctor? The jaw muscles tighten. I'm talking to you about Antonio Carell. I know of no such name. And the Carell family. You never heard of them. Where they are. Where they live. No. You never pay a tribute. Your father before you never paid a tribute. Nor his father. You see, Doctor? You've never heard the name Corral, and you don't know what I'm talking about. And you know nothing about Antonio Corral? You don't know who they are? I asked you about Antonio Corral. Isn't it amazing, Doctor? But no one, absolutely no one, has even heard the name Corral. Is your daughter? What is it? How long has she had this fever? How long has she had this fever? Officer, get her back in here. On what charge? The child is running a very high temperature. That's not considered against the law. Well, it could be meningitis, diphtheria, anything. What's the matter with you people? It's your fear of Antonio Corral that keeps me from helping you. I've studied the medical histories of the world. I tell you, there cannot be such a man. It's your fear that keeps you in rags and in filth and in ignorance. It's killing, crippling your children. Don't you know that? You're cowards. You're crawling cowards. Let them go, Sergeant. Where do you come from, Doctor? Oh, a sensible little place called Des Moines, Iowa. And what do people fear in Des Moines, Iowa? Certainly not this rubbish. Doctor, you're not thinking. Don't you know you can't reason with fear? But how does a thing like this get started? Come with me. I'll show you. They come and see this grave. This tombstone with no date of death for Antonio. As you can see, only one is buried here. What is this? One of the earlier corral houses, oh, maybe 80, 90 years ago. Dynamite was used. They say they heard the explosion on the mainland. There was much happiness. Antonio Corral was finally dead. But within a week, the men who placed the dynamite began dying. Antonio Corral's brand burned into their flesh. You don't believe in Antonio. I'm a policeman. I don't believe in anything. Well, then why this sightseeing tour? I like you. I hope you stay here a long time and cure a lot of stomach aches. But if these are going to be your people, you should...
should understand their fears. Lieutenant, haven't you heard? They've got orders to keep their stomach aches to themselves. In time, Dr. Graham. No. No, Lieutenant, I haven't got the patience. I'll remember them and their fears most kindly when I'm back in Des Moines, Iowa. Yeah? My boy, he's sick. Put him on the table here. He's burning up with fever. Oh, my boy. My hand me. How long has he been not feeling well? Two days. Some of the other children. Yeah, I know. Swell up. I'll have to work fast. Roll up the sleeve. How many other children are ill? I don't know. Many, I suppose. And they'll die. They'll all die because I'm supposed to be some sort of a menace. Because your boogeyman doesn't believe me. Then please hurry. Oh, don't worry. I'll fix him up. the others. I don't know. That medicine is going to fix my boy? Oh, it could. All I have to do is inject this properly. It starts working within seconds. Then please hurry. Like I say, what about the others? Save my boy! decided against it. What are you talking about? He's dying. I suppose so. Then what are you waiting for? I have money, all the money you want. I don't want money. All I want to know is where can I find the house of Antonio Carell? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, then that's too bad. How can you do this? In another week, a hundred children will be in the same condition he is, with no one to help them. All because your Antonio Corral doesn't approve. Now, where is he? Where can I find the house of Antonio Corral? Where? Where? Not worry, Sonny. Isn't that bad? You're going to be fine. Another day wouldn't have made any difference. Just don't tell him. You'll be fine. I came to tell you about the boy. You did not let him die. No, no. He pepped up a little while after you left and then went back to sleep after telling me all about the flyweight champion of the world. Where's he now? He's asleep on my couch. Uh, a friend of Serena's is watching him. Uh, when can I pick him up? Oh, I think tomorrow would be all right. Thank you very much. I'm so grateful. Good night. You know, I got to thinking while I was helping the boy. About what? About how remarkable it was that you were the only one since I've been in this town who wasn't afraid to bring the sick to me. You were the only one who wasn't afraid of Antonio Carell. So? So you must be one of the Corrells. Me, a Corell? I run a grocery store. I... You can't be serious. He is serious. Aren't you, Doctor? I am. All right, then, come in. Come in. I told him to take the boy to my doctor in Havana. He was too late. He would have died. He would have died. My brother lives here in town to mix with the people and watch things. And he's told me all about you. You must be some kind of an idiot. Why? Because I don't believe in Antonio Corral? Because you've interfered in something that's none of your business. Well, in the interest of science, 
I wanted to take Antonio's blood pressure, listen to his heart, write him up in all the medical journals. And so you finally reached him. You are to be congratulated, Doctor. He doesn't look a day over 40. You think it's me? You think that's all there is to this story? You think that's just it? No. Why not? The doctor must learn. Come on, doctor. Look, I gave up believing in the boogeyman when I was seven years old. It's this way. Down the stairs, the room at the bottom. That's very interesting. Now, as a medical man, as a man of science, what should you find in that room? A handful of dust. Then go ahead, doctor. Discover the secret of the Carell's power for 200 years. No, I mean, no. What's the difference? He's going to die anyway. Kill him. I found your corrals, two of them. You wait there, I'll bring you Antonio. No, you must not. What's the matter, don't you want me to know? Empty. Empty. Yes, empty. Antonio lived and died in his own time, just like anybody else. But the Corrells kept the myth alive from generation to generation, to hold this town in fear, to squeeze you dry, to make you their private slaves. And all done with a flickering candle. Pretty, huh? Well, maybe we've learned something. Maybe that's what fear is. An empty room waiting for somebody to open the door and let the fresh air in. Go tell your people. 